Dr. Abel Domina, is it wrong for young people to date, them, to date themselves or should they wait to be led by the spirit for marriage? God does not choose a wife for you and God does not give you a husband. You have to choose. He that finds a wife is ultimately your choice. So again, like we always say, make sure you do it right. Make sure you do it when you're ready for it. Don't get involved in relationships that will mess you up, distract you and just, you know, make a mess of you. When you're ready for it, Stay focused. Just do the things you need to do for yourself. Do the things you need to do for the kingdom and just be focused. In the midst of fulfilling God's purpose, marriage will come naturally with it. Dear Papa, you are a blessing to our generation. Please, I need help. Why did Michael and Satan dispute over the body of Moses in Jude 1.9? Some teachers say Moses was initiated um, to the devil. Then please, Papa, where is his body as we speak? Well, wherever the body of Moses is, is not relevant to salvation, does not have any significance. Whether angels battled over his body or not is still irrelevant because the New Testament didn't give us any details. So we are loud where the Bible is loud, we are quiet where the Bible is quiet. My questions are, why is it irrelevant to use anointing oil and so on for prayer as a believer? It's irrelevant because the anointing, first of all, in the New Testament, you will not see anything about anointing oil, only in the book of James. Who was James writing to in chapter 1 verse 1 to the Jews that are scattered abroad? So it means James was talking to a Jewish community. Why use anointing oil? Because among Jewish people, anointing oil was like first aid. So when somebody is sick, the first thing you do is you rub him anointing oil. It was cultural for the Jewish people. And then when James was writing, he said, Is any sick among you? Let him send for the elders of the church. Let them pray over him. Anointing him with oil to take care of his psychological issue. Then he now says, it is the prayer of faith that will heal the sick and the Lord shall raise him up. It's not the oil. And that is why that's the only place which makes it not a doctrine. And that's why when Brother John was writing, he said, the anointing you have received of him abides in you. So the believer is the bottle of oil and the Holy Spirit in him is the anointing oil. You don't need olive oil. You don't need all those things. In the New Testament, we don't use articles. We walk by faith, not by sight. Okay, Papa, do believers need deliverance? Does it mean that those who are always seeking deliverance are not born again, even though they say they are believers? Well, some of them are not born again and some of them are ignorant. They are believers, but totally ignorant and they are being messed up. A believer does not need deliverance. If you are born again and you are still looking for deliverance, what is born again? Born again is deliverance. It's a movement from one kingdom to another. The day you got born again, light came in. Jesus came in. The devil and darkness can't stay where Jesus reigns. You are the temple of the Holy Ghost. So believers who are still running around looking for deliverance and all of that. And if you observe, even these deliverance experts, the same people that keep falling are the same people that keep falling year in and year out. Ever learning and never able to come to the truth. And he says from such turn away. So again, the believer does not need deliverance. The believer is delivered at the point of being born again. The believer only needs knowledge of what he has received. Papa, when we go to heaven, I understand. I don't know whether I'm right would know each other that means i will know that was my mother my dad my friends and others so will i still be able to relate with them if this is so the husband would also know that that was his wife will they still be considered husband and wife or even relate you are thinking carnally once we drop this body carnal knowledge will disappear but we will know ourselves but not know ourselves at this level we will know that we we knew ourselves in christ Thanks, Pastor, for your labor in the Word. My question is on eternal fire, eternal judgment, and eternal punishment. Matthew 25, 46, And they shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Revelation 20, 14 to 15, And death and hell were cast into the lake of the fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was found written in the Word, in the book of life, was cast into the lake of fire. That's 15. It is part of our discussion on what will happen to men who have rejected Christ. Will they cease to exist or continue to experience destruction for eternity? Men that reject Christ will be thrown into the lake of fire and will be burned to ashes. That's what the Bible teaches. It says, who was behind the killings in the Old Testament? The devil. Jesus said, the thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Speaking also, he said, the devil was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth. In Hebrews, he says, Jesus destroyed him that had the power of death which was the devil so the devil was hiding in the activities of men and using it to destroy to kill and to take away people's lives it was the devil in operation many thanks for joining us we know we're calling from hello i said we are slave to righteousness what does it mean actually 
because at that time they are slaves, serve master. If you are slaves, there is a work you should be doing. So what does it mean? If, uh, as the Bible says, we are slaves to righteousness. Okay, thank you, Pastor. Because you were once enslaved to sin, then now that you are born of God, you have the life of God, you serve righteousness, meaning you will now do the works of righteousness. You are not righteous because of works, but because you are righteous, you do righteousness. That's what he means. Papa, what did Jesus mean when he said no man has seen God at any time or heard his voice? It means no man has seen a visible appearance of God ever from the beginning of time until the incarnation when God became a man. Another caller. Hello. Thank you for joining us. Yes, sit on. Okay. Sir, could you please elaborate or could you please talk about um, female believers wearing pants or trousers and also using uh, extension on the hair, sexual like weave on, weave and stuff like that? What does the Bible say? Okay, so now you want me to talk about weave on and ladies wearing trousers, trousers and all of that. The Bible's position on that is modesty, simple. There's no problem if a woman puts on a trouser or if a woman puts on a wrapper, it's dressing. And dressing is culture. If in your culture, trousers are okay, go ahead, wear your trousers. It doesn't affect anything at all. But the only thing is that the Bible emphasizes modesty. What about attachment? Nothing wrong with it. It's part of your dressing. Wear your attachment proudly so and enjoy yourself. If you have gold, put on it. If you have diamonds, put them on. It doesn't affect anything. The only thing is you must cover your nakedness and you must be decent. That's all that matters. 